Michael, before we get into the Mean Girls stuff, Kimberly Kitching leaves quite a legacy. I know you were good friends. You had lunch with her just last week. How are you? I'm heartbroken, Laura, to tell you the truth. We were close mates well, instantly since she arrived from Queensland in Melbourne 27 years ago. Amanda and I loved her deeply and uh, she was at our home many times and I spoke to her practically on the phone every day for those uh, nearly 30 years. So it's yeah. devastating, not just for all of her many friends. You know what a charming person she was, Laura, but um, I think she's a great loss to Australia. Um, she would have been a future foreign affairs or defence minister and particularly in these dangerous times her uh, you know what is described by some as hawkish views were absolutely appropriate for the times mm. yeah and her advocacy within the party uh, outside the party particularly for the Magnitsky Act which I know you're passionate about is, is one thing but did she ever talk about the stress of politics the culture within labor was there this mean girls attitude oh look um, no, no rational person would say that you can, you know, trace the, the differences in politics to her, to her uh, directly to her death. But I can tell you during the last year, she certainly felt the stress of hang, having her Senate pre-selection dangled over her head uh, by a cabal of Lilliputians, that's how I'd describe them, in the Victorian right, who, uh, whose names will never be known, who always lurk in the shadows, who only have transitory power and, uh, you know, a brilliant international and, and national advocate who in, in, in one term had such a profile, you know, is was really uh, upset by um, um, not being able to sort of order her life and plan her life. What a disgrace that these people were able to, uh, um, you know, cause her such stress. Um, there, there, she also spoke to, to many of her friends about the uh, uh, ups and downs of politics in Canberra. And she was, a, as you know, no wilting flower, uh, Laura. She was a charming, cosmopolitan person who wasn't afraid to mix it up. She liked exchanging views with people. She liked having, having arguments. But I think, think her treatment as outlined by... Um, Sherry Marks and indeed Troy Bramerton yesterday in the uh, Australian was beyond fair treatment um, and differences of opinions. It, it was mm. it, nothing short of bullying. And what what's distressing for uh, for um, women leaders is that you know you, you can't just complain about people being bullied who are um, your. Uh, people who are disadvantaging your ideological opponents. Mm. You have to be consistent. That's why Kimberley speaking up for Nicole Flint, I thought was so principled. Um, and, and I wish um, her treatment had been different because she, whether Penny Wong liked her or not, was really irrelevant. She should have recognised that she had so much to contribute um, and, uh, uh, and sort of been a broad church as Labor is meant to be. What are you talking about when it when it comes to bullying? I mean, is there a fine line between the fierce political contest uh, within and without the party? Or, I mean, you named Penny Wong there. Why? Well, she's named in the article. I'm only, only repeating what's um, right. been said about um, Kimberley being taken off the tactics committee and being denied questions and being denied media briefs and um, uh, her, her, her staff being... Um, you know, really badly treated by um, the staff of some of those senators mentioned in that uh, that article. Um, look, it's a fine line. You're right. People are entitled to sort of fierce disagreements, etc. Um, but um, it, it was too much, uh, in my opinion. Um, what was done across that fine line, and um, people should say they're sorry and they regret it, um, and be more collegial with others. The problem is, uh, for those of us who knew Kimberley, there, there isn't her like uh, to be seen easily in the Australian Parliament. Um, you know, she spoke five languages. She was instantly familiar with legislation. She was left in there for 10 hours at a time during the, uh, the midnight shift in the Senate for too long, too many days um, as a sort of punishment because 
she didn't uh, agree with uh, mm. uh, people's um, ideological views. And look, it, it, it's it, it's a point of view that Kimberley had and that I have, and that is that the left wing of the Labor Party is too strong, um, and that it need the, the reason she was um, difficult is because she represented uh, the mainstream. Bob Hawke, Paul Keating, Kim Beasley point of view that is now not in the ascendancy in Labor. And um, people were envious of her cosmopolitanism, her charm, her the international and, and national support, her support across the aisles, as you can see very clearly by the very kind comments of, uh, uh, you know, Andrew Hastie or James Patterson or, or people like that. These are times that Kimberley understood were for the national interest. Her days were coming. You know, China's hot breath is on the neck of Australia. And some people in the Australian Senate don't understand that. Kimberley did, and she spoke for Australia. She was a patriot, and uh, she'll be sorely missed, including by her, her friends. They sure will, and she had a lot of them, as you say, across the aisle. And as I keep on saying, she was fierce, but so kind, and that seems to be a rarity in politics. Michael Danby, I know it's uh, difficult for you to speak to us, but I really appreciate you doing so. Thanks, Laura.